little brown bats have nearly disappeared from six states. At the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, the curator in charge of mammals, Dr. Christopher Helgen, has been keeping a close eye on the epidemic. What scares me about white-nose syndrome is how little we know about it. Does it have a longer history in North America? Does it have a history on other continents? Is it associated with other environments and species? We have no idea. Deanne Reeder has been a Smithsonian research associate for years. Her ongoing donation of infected and healthy specimens is helping to build a key scientific resource. The Smithsonian has the largest natural history collection in the world, and the mammal collection is the largest in the world, and the bat collection, I believe, is the largest bat collection in the world. It's about 140,000 specimens of bats, uh, representing uh, not every, but most, most species that are known to science worldwide. Each of those specimens takes you to a particular time and a particular place. If we want to know something about what species was living in a particular forest at a particular time point, we can't get in a time machine and go back there and look. But in a way, we can, and the reason is specimens were collected at those times and places, time stamped, taken out of circulation, tucked away in these cabinets and archived for perpetuity. And that resource, that physical specimen and the data that are associated with it, that takes us right back to that very time and place. Using this time machine, Chris begins searching for past evidence of the disastrous fungus in North American bat populations. Ultraviolet light will reveal if any fungus is present. Swabbing the wings and mouths of bats may pick up trace amounts of fungal DNA. So by looking for the fungus that causes white-nose syndrome and perhaps other related fungi in collections is learning more about their distribution and learning more about their associations and learning more about their history.